Hey guys, welcome back to Nature's Cadence Farm. Today we're going to be working on our 1997 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And uh, what we've got is a problem with the, um, well a couple of problems. Uh, but I've got a leaky transmission cooler line. So we're going to go ahead and put some new parts on here. Here's a couple of the elbows that go to the auxiliary cooler. And there's the part numbers on those. So you got a 624-384. And those go on this auxiliary cooler mounted right here at the radiator or the condenser, really. And uh, the other the other part is this uh, 624-306 right there. So hopefully you can see that. Uh, and this is the line that actually goes all the way back to the transmission itself with the flexible uh, flexible connections that go to the radiator hard line so um, yeah so let's jump underneath it here and get this thing going so to start off with we're gonna go ahead and remove this uh, grill here that's two number two Phillips screws one here and one here and then the this just lifts lifts out this is where the real problem was, was these two connections right here. There's one right here and then there's one back behind there. Uh, when the Jeep is running, we get uh, quite a bit of, well not quite a bit, but it does leak uh, transmission fluid out. And what happened was it got low and the engine was actually stalling when you were at a stoplight once it was warmed up. I guess the converter or something, you know, was trying to lock up and, and it, it was just making the engine stall. So you can see these lines, they go to some connections here and we're, we don't have to take any of that apart. Um, then, let's see, here goes on back to right here. So here's the, the two lines right here and there's the exhaust pipe that might be interesting. And then it goes to a, uh, a fitting right here on the front kind of hard to see that but uh, there's the fitting there and then there's the the other quick connect uh, right back there and that's going to use uh, tools like like this and I'll, I'll get that size for you here once I get on there and get these going gonna be kind of hard to video all this underneath you here but I'm gonna walk you through what I do as I do it so uh, let's go ahead and try to get some of these uh, quick connects undone and uh, then we'll we'll know what size we need here I went ahead and got one off and you can see here that the quick connect needs uh, to be compressed there to to be released from that the metal stationary piece there so up here you can see I've got the tool slid on here and I'll put links for this stuff in the description so check that out and I've got this on the E size this is an auto craft set that I got from advanced auto parts and uh, and I've got it what you do is you push it together around the the metal pipe you know so that it's together and then you wiggle and pull and slide it toward the quick connect part and then what that does is it compresses that plastic snap in there and then you have to wiggle this metal piece and pull at the same time so it's going to be kind of hard for me to show you it might pop off of there I might have to wiggle and jiggle with with a pair of pliers on there a little bit to get it to come loose but I've got the tool seated as far down into this connector as far as possible and what it does is it rests up against this the face of the plastic little lip right there you can see the very edge of it it rests up against that and when it's in there all the way it's it's released those plastic clips right there so there's the rearmost connector there that's another quick connect that took this tool and oh that was the F oh no that was the E uh, yeah that was the E and it just slides up onto the the metal pipe and then you just pull the pipe right out of there so that worked out next up is we're gonna try to get this connection right here undone and that is a um, that's actually a, a, a threaded nut so we're gonna find out what size that is let's see here so there's the wrench on the nut itself it's a 19 millimeter so I'm gonna work on getting this broken free and loosening it up 
What happened when I tried to take the nut loose, it just uh, twisted the line around and it just broke off. But it, it really didn't matter because I just uh, need to get this fitting. I already loosened this up. This is a uh, 16 millimeter on this brass part and the steel part is a uh, 19 millimeter. That's what I was wrenching on to get that out of there. So you just take this apart and then I'm going to put some, uh, some hydraulic thread sealer back on here and I'll show you what I'm going to use for that right there in the center of the frame is where the fitting goes back in here's the fitting that I removed from from that hole right up there and I've cleaned the threads really well with some uh, brake parts cleaner and then just wiped it down with a rag and I'm going to use this uh, permabond uh, hydraulic sealant on here and uh, that's that's okay for uh, you know hydraulic systems which is what this is so let's get that on there and get that in so with this stuff it it doesn't take much just a little bit and uh, I'm just gonna rotate it around a little bit and put some on this side too right there there we go all right so let's get that put back in there and, and tightened up got everything loose up there and went ahead and got that fitting reinstalled back onto the transmission back behind all that now it's time to get these lines fished out of here somehow some way looks like this is going to kind of be in the way here I might have to loosen up these uh, the exhaust flange bolts uh, to get a little more wiggle room because this this bend right here is really really kind of causing an issue so uh, let's go ahead and get that I went ahead and got the uh, the flange off of there and that was uh, 9 sixteenths on both sides of that so 9 sixteenths on the nut and 9 sixteenths on the bolt the bolt head face down I used a 18 inch impact extension with a uh, impact gun there and the uh, 9 sixteenths deep well on on that and just fished it up from down here and then I went ahead and pried the pipe off of the flange so I can get these pipes uh, up and around this this pipe will move now so you can get you know you can get them kind of fished around there so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get those out of there what I did was was pulled down on the pipe and rotated it out and then I could slide the uh, these two metal lines between the the header and the ex actual exhaust pipe there but now that I got the lines out of there installation is going to go the same as reverse I just pulled them out through this this large cavity kind of right here and I got to fish them back up through, uh, you can see my hand kind of wiggling there a little bit, fish them back up through there to get them where I need them. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you what I got when I get them in. Now that I've got the new lines kind of fished through here and the, you know, the ends are in the right place here and those ends are in the right place back there. It's time to rotate this around again and and get these back behind it. It looks like these elbows are going to have to be in front of the bell housing for the transmission so that they can kind of squeeze around there. Went ahead and pulled this back like that and fished the uh, the metal round lines around the top of here. You kind of have to uh, get a little a little aggressive with them but I mean obviously don't bend them up but uh, you know they do kind of flex a little bit so I kind of just uh, rolled them right over the top of there and they fell right into place after that. So next up, we're going to go ahead and get these connectors attached on to the, the fitting that we threaded back into the transmission. And then get this line here started into the, the connector. And uh, it looks like that's going to just slide up in there and then... Have, do like the quick connect kind of thing so I'm gonna work on getting this straight and lined up like that and then it should just uh, just push right in there so I'm gonna work on that and I'll let you know how it goes this is gonna be a 19 millimeter again on this nut wanted to show you real quick the line is not fully installed until that ring that was on there is fully seated inside of that connector uh, I thought it was all the way in and then just double checked everything and 
and thought it looked a little off so I went ahead and fixed that that's all the way in now and this you know this can't come out I played with that and then I uh, went ahead and got that tightened down and 19 millimeter again and uh, did not need any thread locker because it's a flare fitting on there so the flare takes care of the ceiling so uh, let's head up to the front and get those uh, new elbows installed while the lines are nice and loose and we can move everything around for that auxiliary cooler I forgot to mention earlier one of the other reasons we were taking this thing out is this line one of these was actually both of them both of them were actually leaking right here at this crimp between the rubber and the the metal line and that was uh, you know these are factory these are from 97 uh, so I mean they, they've lasted 250,000 miles hopefully the other ones last just as long so here's the auxiliary cooler here and you can see this rubber elbow here and uh, there's one down below on this this cooler also and those had been leaking for a long time really really slowly but making just a mess up here and just dripping stuff everywhere and these these elbows are actually factory here so I went ahead and loosened up this one hose clamp right here and what that gave me was the ability to go ahead and pop this off and then I could rotate and shift this around so I could get to these other these other hose clamps that are actually underneath it here so there's well it just fell down there but you get the idea there's there's uh the hose clamps are down here for the uh this this other cooler line that I can get to and I can go ahead and replace that elbow also so I'm gonna wiggle this around and see if I can get it into a little bit better position to go ahead and work on changing these lines out right here these rubber lines so let's go ahead and do that what I'm doing here is loosening up these lower hose clamps and I'm uh, gonna slide these out of the way I'm gonna probably go ahead and replace them with some new ones uh, while I've got it apart these are the ones that have like a, the worm gear part is uh, well, the little receiving part on the band is actually just kind of stamped into the metal instead of cut slots like a, I guess a normal hose clamp would be, <laughs> one I would consider normal. Uh, so anyways, we've got that off of there and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and try to push push off this this line from the metal line. The metal line off and the rubber line off together there so there we go and again these have, these have been on there for many many years so there that's off so now we can go ahead and try to get to this other connection and get that so I'm gonna work on that for a few minutes and uh, let you know how it goes there we go so see how we got it out there now so we go ahead and pull this this off so this will be the first one we put back on because this was kind of the hardest the hardest to get to there we go all right yeah so there's there's the line and I'm sure it, you know it's it's just old and and hard so anyways um, let's get one of these elbows out and uh, well, they call it a transmission cooler line, but that's it right there. And that's going to go on just like that. And then one of our new hose clamps is going to go on. And I'm going to try to orientate the, the direction like I had them in case I need to tighten them up later. Looks like it needs to go on like that. So that way, if I do need to tighten them up, I can get to them with a long screwdriver from, from up here. So it looks like that might need to be loosened up just a, a touch bit more. There we go. Well, looks like that might actually want to go on this side first. Um, so I don't have to go around that 90. There we go. So I'm going to turn it kind of up that way so I can get to it, like I said, if I had to with a, a long screwdriver in the future. I got all the new hoses on, 
cooler lines and uh, all these new hose clamps got those in place and the one down there got that in place wasn't too bad you had to kind of finagle this thing back and forth to get these uh, you know hoses to line up and the hose clamps line up now all I got to do is just go back with these and these are quarter inch head on these uh, these hose clamps but yours yours could be different uh, then these clamps here with these 10 millimeter head bolts uh, hold everything back together so there's one at the top one here and one here I went ahead and took this uh, temperature sensor here loose and got that out of the way to make it a little bit easier to to move this uh, around back here behind everything so that that kind of helped a little bit and that's just a number two Phillips on that right there so I'm going to tidy all this stuff up and uh, and then make our connections underneath where the radiator connects up here's the new cooler line connectors and uh, this one here with the extra fitting on it goes into the this one right here goes into this lower connector the one right here at the lower radiator hose and uh, this one here without the extra connector on here goes on to the the one that goes up to the auxiliary cooler right here so let's uh oh yeah, there it is right there so let's go ahead and uh, get these guys going here and really it should just be uh should just be a plug and play kind of thing where you get them started wiggle them and jiggle them and uh, they should snap right on there there it goes yep just like that so not not too hard you just gotta and now this one's kind of loose so I'm gonna wipe some of the dirt off of this one here we get this cleaned up real quick what I ended up doing for this one was putting a pair of pliers on this metal line up above here and holding that kind of against uh, you know itself so I'd have something to push against because this is kind of floppy and then just push this connector right up on there and uh, there's a plastic retainer clip on the uh, blower shroud the fan shroud up there that uh, that this is going to clip into I had tidied everything up I got the um, got the flange bolted back in there no problem at all again those were 9 sixteenths I made sure that the tubing was had clearance behind this downpipe so everything's good to go with that I got plenty of room it wiggles it doesn't touch I uh, got these these guys buttoned up up here and everything's tightened up back here and everything's done in the front so um, that's got it transmission lines are in last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put this grill on it's uh, two number two Phillips screws that hold this on there it's not uh, and it just slips down into the bottom all right guys well that wasn't too bad uh, we went ahead and got that transmission cooler lines all the transmission cooler lines replaced on this machine um, I think they'll provide us many many more years of service so I'm excited about that one less thing I got to worry about because it was leaking fluid so that's back together now so anyways uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time